Sunflowers are probably one of the most versatile crops grown today. They're used for medicine, food, dyes, decorations. You'll see them growing in vegetable gardens, ornamental landscapes, and even wildflower meadows. And their oil production is now ranked third behind soybean and cottonseed oil, so sunflowers are really gaining in a lot of popularity. Now, culturally, sunflowers prefer full sun again. They're native to North America, and there's many hundreds of species and even a lot of new exciting cultivars. Also, soil-wise, they, they really will tolerate a wide range of soil as long as the pH is around neutral or 6.5, 7.5, and it's well-drained. And even we found that if you get them in too fertile a soil, sometimes they'll stretch on you, get a little bit more elongated, and really outgrow the suggested size that's on the cultivar packet. So spacing, of course, is dependent upon the cultivar when you plant them. They're very heat tolerant, and it's really best to not get in too big a hurry when planting sunflowers. Wait and plant them about the time you would oak or watermelons. If you get them in too early, sometimes the seed will rot or they'll just kind of sit there and be stunted and not get growing on you. Most of the time, it's direct seeded, but you can have some success with transplants as long as you get them in. Like pea pots, you can directly put them in and also uh, get them in before the transplants get too big. Now let me show you some of the cultivars here at our gardens. Gosh, any more sunflowers, it's not yellow. It comes in white and orange, reds, and really even a more brighter yellow color. This particular one here is called Valentine. And Valentine is about three feet in height as a general rule. And notice the ones that are usually more dwarf in height have branching, side branching, with the flowers coming off the side shoots. And this is a good one for cut flowers. And sunflowers are becoming very popular for cut flowers. And if you'll look at the comparison of these two here, this one is um, a little bit earlier in its maturity. And that would be a nice one to cut. Of course, we've got some insect problems on there. But you'll see the center is not quite as far along as this one, which is reaching past its maturity. But if you want to cut them for fresh cut flowers, what you would want to do, just like some of the things we've talked about earlier in the season, cut them uh, as long as you can on the stems. It depends if it's a main stalk or a side shoot. Cut them early in the morning when there's a lot of moisture in the plant, and then go ahead and stick them directly in the water. And it's always a good idea if you take them inside and they've been out too long to recut those stems and go ahead and get them in a of water that has preservative to get that pH down to around almost 3.5 because I really like more of an acidic water to keep them as a fresh cut flower. Also sunflowers will store nicely in the refrigerator for a few days without freezing them uh, before you put them out in display. So if you've got to wait a few days they'll store nicely in the refrigerator and then of course you'd want to cut the stem again and it's okay to peel off some of the foliage as well. Now, if you're going to cut them for drying, you also want to get them before the flower gets too mature so you can hold the petals on there. And you would uh, basically do the opposite. You would cut them in the hottest part of the day so there won't be as much moisture in the foliage. Again, that one is not too mature, too over uh, pollinated for us. So the, the center is still nice and crisp and the flowers are in good shape. And those you would just bundle up. You don't have to put them in water. You can take them inside, let them dry a little bit more, and you can use really just about any of the methods to dry flowers like silica gel, et cetera, and they will make nice dried flower arrangements. Or again, you can use them as cut flowers. So there's several different cultivars coming out on the market, and let me show you some of the ones that we have here in our, our uh, sunflower garden display. Now again, that one was Valentine. This one is Sunrich Lemon. And it's a little bit over mature, but you can see the petals are a very rich lemony color with a dark center. And it's going to range anywhere from three to five feet according to the seed packet directions. And that's a nice one with a nice cluster of flowers that also could be used for cut flowers. Then the taller ones back here behind us is called Sunburst, and it's really a mix. And you'll see that it's our tallest one at, gosh, about seven feet. The nice thing is the sunflower really protrudes out and emerges, sticks out right above the foliage, so it's a nice display. And again, there'll be some variation in the flower petals on each of the particular ones in that mix. One a little bit shorter is called Italian White. 
and really um, I guess it gets whiter as it matures but to me it's a little it, it's still very yellow but it's a nice creamy whitish yellow color with the dark center and again you can see the petals on that one have bleached out a little bit more but it's not quite as as white as I had expected reading it on the seed packet and its side branch is not as tall and the flowers are a little bit smaller but gosh it makes a really neat cut flower because of the pointed petals around the flower. Now in our sunflower display garden because of one of our themes this year of wildlife habitat we have a nice little sunflower bird bath that was donated to us from Virginia, Virginia Metal Crafters. It's a cast aluminum sunflower bird bath that hosts some water and gosh it is just a nice accent to the sunflower garden obviously it's the shape of a sunflower it's been a popular item and we also have a bird feeder in the garden that one of our ambassadors made for us that has a little area to hold bud, uh, bird seed and it's the shape of a sunflower so really a nice addition but back on our cultivars you'll see that this is the smallest one in our garden this year called teddy bear it's about two feet and it's a double sunflower so you don't see the center as pronouncedly as you do on the other ones and it's solid yellow so it's a double very small nice cut flower again so it, it can be a border plant this one is velvet queen a lot of comments on it because of its uh, bronzy color almost a burnt orange on the petals or rays so it's a little bit different color contrast from the traditional sunflower that we're used to. And then on the back side is one of my favorites that is a sunbeam. And the reason I like it so much is it's got a yellow center as well as yellow petals. And the very eye before it begins to pollinate is green. And so it's a little bit different contrast, a bigger flower and really colorful. And I've been really pleased with that one. So it's yellow on yellow with a green eye. Now, obviously, most people, when they grow sunflowers, they grow them for seed production in addition. And one of the ways to know that it's ready is the neck will start bending over, basically, because it gets heavy. You'll also see the back side will start turning a yellowish, darker color, showing it's ripening. And plus, you'll just see that it's been pollinated and the seeds are in there. And this one is a little bit early but I've cut it off just to demonstrate what it looks like. But it's been pollinated, the seeds are formed, and you'll see them start to turn a darker color, and then it will fall off here a little bit. And that's a time to take them in and let them dry. And a lot of people will put them in a bag or a netting mesh or anything to keep the seeds from falling out and losing them, and also to protect them from insects. And like any crop grown in the insect, or in the garden there's all kinds of insect problems and let me show you some of the ones that we've had in our garden probably the most obvious one is called patch butterfly it's a larva that you can see has totally defoliated this plant and here's some of them coming back even it will make a nice butterfly so again it has a great purpose in our butterfly garden but here we've lost the entire plant and the production of the seed head wouldn't be as predominant so we've had to spray those with BT. You'll also notice that we've gotten some borers in the center. There's a hole and they've gone in the side and bored in and then with the first a little bit of wind or or maybe a bird landing on them it's caused the top to snap and break off. Also uh, we started feeding the birds. We've had squirrels come into the garden and you can see the squirrels are not even waiting for them to get ripe. They're starting to come in here, crawl on them, and chew on the edges like you see here. So we'll have to do something to try to, to uh, protect them from the squirrels. And also the birds will start coming in and feeding. And many people do that. They'll just grow them, let them go to seed, and let the birds feed on them right out of the garden. And that's an okay thing to do. But if you're trying to harvest them for seed, some people have told me successfully just to cover it with netting after it's pollinated and protect them from the birds and squirrels that way too. You just need to make sure the squirrels don't chew through it. Sometimes you'll get diseases like powdery mildew, some other problems, but really insects seem to be the biggest problem. And so when you spray, you gotta be careful because they're insect pollinated and you'll see the bees and butterflies are just covered with them. If you spray the flowers, you may damage the flowers and cause poor pollination. So you need to keep in mind all of those practices. But I think the most exciting thing is there's so many cultivars out there that have a lot of variation in color and in height, and there's so many uses for them. Hopefully, you'll try to incorporate some into your garden next year.